Be Wealthy and Smart, episode 885. into a world of wealth and financial freedom without budgets, boredom, or bosses on Be Wealthy and Smart. And now, here's your host, Linda P. Jones. Welcome to Be Wealthy and Smart. I'm Linda P. Jones, America's Wealth Mentor, empowering women and men worldwide to financial freedom. On today's show, we're going to talk about ETFs that pay you monthly, because a lot of people ask about dividend ETFs and ways to get passive income. And I think passive income is great, but I also wanna caution you that when you're collecting income from stocks, that means that that money is being paid out of the company. And it has to be a mature company that's generally a slower grower in order to pay a dividend like that because most fast growing companies are going to reinvest that money into their future growth. So just be aware that if you are investing in dividend stocks, that means typically you're investing in a company that's been around for a very long time, they're typically very large, and they typically aren't growing extremely fast because they are paying out their cash in the form of a dividend. Now that's all well and good if you are needing income. But if you are still accumulating and growing your retirement funds, you really want to focus on more of the fast growers and less of the income oriented type ETFs. So while I know that people love passive income, just think about growth and passive income being two separate things. Growth being while you're still in the growth and accumulation phase of your retirement, that's really important is to have those numbers continue to compound for you. And then once you're retired, that's when you should be more interested in getting the passive income. All right, so now that I've cleared that up, I have an article to share with you from Investors Business Daily, and it was written by Matt Krantz. It says, why wait for dividend payments? Find ETFs that pay you monthly. And it says, investors can't control that S&P 500 dividend yields are shrinking, but at least they can control how often they get paid with ETFs. More than 500 ETFs, including SoFi Weekly Income ETF, symbol TGIF, Global X NASDAQ 100 Covered Call ETF, QYLD, and Invesco S&P 500 Low Volatility ETF, symbol SPLV, pay dividends at least monthly, says Morningstar Direct. More than 160 yielded 3% or more over the past 12 months. Fast payout ETFs are unusual. A majority of ETFs, more than 2,000 funds, pay ETFs either semi-annually, quarterly, or just once a year. I want to stop there and say, you know what strikes me as I read that is that while most ETFs are invested in bonds in order to pay a yield, we are going to talk about the Global X NASDAQ 100 Covered Call ETF, which is doing a completely different strategy with covered calls that can generate a much higher form of income. So that one's very interesting. But also I wanna make the point that in the future, when we have cryptocurrencies and they have smart contracts, they will be able to pay out on a daily basis because everything will be able to settle instantaneously. So in the future, I think we'll have daily payout ETFs. Won't that be really interesting? So the article goes on to say, getting more frequent payments can help make up for falling yields. The Spider S&P 500 ETF, symbol SPY, which pays quarterly, yields just 1.4%, down from 1.54% a year ago and 1.97% five years ago, says S&P Global Market Intelligence. And the yield on the iShares Core US Aggregate Bond ETF, symbol AGG, which pays a dividend monthly, is down to 1.8% from 2.5% a year ago. So if yields are falling, at least you can get paid more often. People love getting what they're due as quickly as possible, said a spokesperson at SoFi, which launched the SoFi Weekly Dividend ETF, symbol WKLY, in May. 
A vast majority of ETFs that pay dividends monthly own bonds. That's because most interest-bearing bonds pay monthly to investors, says Todd Rosenbluth, head of ETF and mutual fund research at CFRA. For instance, the $88 billion in assets iShare Core U.S. Aggregate Bond ETF is the largest ETF that pays out monthly. The ETF is loaded with 39% of its assets in government bonds, 26% in corporates, and 21% in secured debt. And yet, you might find ways to speed up bond payments. The SoFi Weekly Income ETF pays bond income to investors weekly, usually on Friday. It owns mostly investment-grade and high-yield bonds. You can get dividend payments more often with stocks, too. The $30 billion in assets Spider Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF, symbol DIA, is the largest non-bond ETF that pays monthly. It owns the 30 stocks in the Dow Jones Industrial Average and yields 1.6%. The $8.2 billion in assets in Vesco S&P 500 Low Volatility ETF also pays monthly, but it owns stocks expected to smooth the ups and downs of the S&P 500. It's loaded 24% up on consumer staples like Colgate Palmolive and Procter & Gamble. It yields 1.74%. SoFi's weekly dividend ETF makes monthly payments look late. Big holdings are mostly multinationals with steady dividends like J.P. Morgan Chase and Procter & Gamble. The ETF aims for its average yield of roughly 300 holdings to be at least 1.2 times higher than most large firms' yields. And yet, other ETFs paying dividends monthly look to alternate methods. One way to goose both the size and frequency of dividends is by using covered call options. Here, an ETF generates income by selling options contracts tied to stocks it owns. The $2.9 billion in assets Global X NASDAQ 100 Covered Call ETF is one of the larger funds running this strategy. It owns the 100 largest non-financial stocks on the NASDAQ, just like the Invesco QQQ Trust, But, unlike the QQQ, it yielded more than 11.7% over the past 12 months. And Global X NASDAQ 100 call pays monthly. The QQQ, on the other hand, yields just 0.5% quarterly. More frequent dividends are attractive to investors hungry for income, says Ben Johnson, director of ETF research at Morningstar. But don't overlook important ETF traits like strategy, dividend growth, and safety of the dividends, he says. End of article. This article also has a chart that says, Why wait? Select ETFs that pay dividends at least monthly. And it has a chart with the ticker symbol, the assets in billions, the yield, the expense ratio, and when it pays its dividend. So I will post that on my website. You can click through and take a look at that if you like. I think in these low interest rate times when bonds are at historic lows near zero, it can be challenging to find sources of higher income. Sometimes people reach to lower quality bonds called junk bonds to try to get higher yield. But in that case, you're taking more risk because you're going to lower quality bonds, which means they're lower rated, meaning they have a higher propensity to default. And that's why they're considered junk. Because just like if you had a lower credit score, you'd be a worse credit risk. That's the same thing with junk bonds. They're rated lower because they are higher risk. So while we don't want to stretch for yield and reach for yield by going into riskier assets, I think what's interesting is this covered call strategy is a conservative strategy, but yet has been able to get a double digit yield. So I'm not gonna go into covered calls here. If you wanna learn more about that, I suggest that you take the time to study that. But basically you own the underlying stock, they're writing calls against that, collecting the premium, and it is a conservative strategy for income generation. Anyway, I thought I would share this article with you because I know we have a lot of people that like to have income, and I thought the weekly income angle was very interesting, and also the covered call angle was very interesting. So I hope you enjoyed that article. If you haven't yet subscribed to Be Wealthy and Smart, hit the subscribe button, and you'll be notified as soon as new podcasts are available so you never miss one of them.
And we're in the final couple of days of our review contest. And right now, everybody who's left a review is scheduled to win a prize because I have 25 prizes and we only have 18 new reviews since we started the contest. So I hope that we get more people to write reviews because your chances of winning something are really, really good. What can you win? One of my Wealth Heiress books signed by me. That book was named to the list of all-time best wealth books by Book Authority, and men love it too. You could win my Wealthy Mindset Blueprint audio sets valued at $197 to help you get a wealthier mindset and remove blocks and limiting beliefs. And five people will win a one-on-one wealth mentoring session with me. All you need to do is leave a podcast review on Apple Podcasts for Be Wealthy and Smart. That will get your name in the drawing one time. And if you've read The Wealth Heiress Book and leave a book review on Amazon, that will get your name in the drawing two times. And winners will be announced on our next podcast. So again, please leave a review. I love reading them. Thank you to everyone who has already left a review. And your chances of winning something are really good. That's all for today. Until next time, live the good life and be wealthy and smart. Thank you for listening to Be Wealthy and Smart with Linda P. Jones. Share the wealth and tell your family and friends about the show. Check out our website, blog, and social media for more riches at www.bewealthyandsmart.com.